Good morning, everyone. My name is Peter Jacobson. I work with business development here at Broadcast Solutions. We call this uh, session IP over RF for live production. We do say it's a game changer. Let's see at the end of today, if you agree. We will be virtually traveling the, traveling the world for insights in the technology, and we will brief you touch, uh, briefly on, uh, on a couple of use cases. What you just saw was one of many applications for IP mesh radios, providing video coverage over a major city with little efforts using the right tools. After this session, we will continue with a couple of use cases. And at 10.30, we will, we will be visiting Hungary. And at 11, we will move over to Singapore. By all means, don't forget to ask questions. If there are too many, we will for sure answer them as soon as we can. Should they be very difficult, then I'm glad to have Mr. Helge Langer here with us as a technical anchor for anything difficult that may come up. So let me introduce my first guest or our first guest, Mr. JP Delport, Managing Director of Broadcast Solutions in the UK and with more than 15 years in the business. Good morning and welcome, JP. Morning, Peter. Thank you very much. I think it's best if I uh, share my screen here, if that's okay. Please do. All right, that should be shared now. Um, right, so for today, we're just going to take a, uh, well, if I just give you a quick index. Um, number one, we will be uh, taking a trip down wireless camera memory lane. Um, then we'll be talking what about what I think the next big thing in, in wireless, ca uh, wireless camera technology is. And uh, three, like all good presentations, we'll leave you with a bit of a, bit of a cliffhanger, right? Right, so let's go. Notable moments in wireless camera technology. I'm not sure if any of you will remember this. This is the uh, PETA. It was manufactured by GigaWave. Um, and this started the wireless camera revolution. Um, it truly was amazing technology at the time, but it was analog and therefore somewhat quirky, should we say. Uh, in fact, it actually needed someone sitting in the stands with a, with a directional antenna pointed at it at all times to, to make it work. Uh, then for me came a, an absolute seismic shift in, in technology. Uh, and that was the transition from analog to digital. Uh, and this was done by Link Research with the invention of what's called the Link XP. Um, from SD, we went to, to HD. And then from MPEG-2, we went to... MPEG-4, and then from MPEG-4, we now at HEVC, which is affording us 4K pictures. But for me, the biggest shift is when we went from analog to digital. Um, this gave us things like cellular diversity, multi-pass reflections, non-line of sight performance, FECs and guard intervals, and all things that made these systems far more robust and reliable in mobile applications. And this paved the way for the progression of video formats from SD to, to 4K pictures we see today. So what are the next big thing? Well, um, to answer this question, we must first understand what the current problems are that we face today. Uh, number one, I'm sure you'll all agree is, is complexity. Uh, this is a system diagram we recently did for, for a sailing event. Um, two, cost, and depending on the complexity, the cost can really quickly soar out of control. But the biggest problem of all, I'm sure you all agree, is the availability of, of spectrum um, or, or lack thereof. And we all know that telcos and, and governments have bought up or just taken up a significant amount of broadcast spectrum over the years, which leaves large events, even small events, events facing real problems. And that's why for me, I, I really do believe that um, IP mesh could be the next big, big thing in our industry. Uh, in a minute, you'll hear from Jimmy Henderson and all the incredible advancements of, of Silver's IP mesh. But in a nutshell, this single frequency um, But in an actual, the single frequency network you can create uh, has got bit rates up to 100 megabits, and this can easily afford you 
the ability to have multiple HD roaming cameras, all with features like camera control, talk back, reverse video, even effects mics can be put into this network. No more running around with fiber to set up new camera positions, just drop another RF uh, node as a repeater. And remember, all of this is on a single frequency. But the mesh radio itself only contributes to part of this golden nugget. If you, like most of the industry, is still using HDSDI, we will need to pair the mesh with a capable encoder to realize all of these amazing features that IP mesh can afford us. Let's say hypothetically that broadcast solutions could give you all of this as an all-in-one package solution. What could you expect? Well, we are talking about a system that shares a hundred megabits pipe, a network that is self-healing in the fact that you can add a node to the mesh seamlessly and remove a node seamlessly, a system, where, a system whereby all nodes speak to each other bidirectionally, all on the same frequency. Want to go further? No problem. Just add another mesh node and off you go. Even the battery will last you the whole day. An encoding engine on the latest HEVC platform giving you premiership HD video quality as low as five megabits, all whilst affording you a sub 40 millisecond end-to-end -end delay. Well, what if I told you this wasn't hypothetical? Could Broadcast Solutions have an encoder and give the industry the single frequency mesh solution that is perfect for all broadcast applications? Well, I did say it was coming. And here it is, the cliffhanger. All I can say is right now is watch this space. We do have something around the corner that could really be an absolute game changer for this all-in-one package solution. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, JP, and especially for that cliffhanger. So all we can say, as you say, is stay tuned and uh, watch this space. There will be more to come. So without further ado, I would like to go directly to California and Mr. Jimmy Henderson. VP of Sales at Silvus Technologies. He will be sharing a couple of insights in the technology and the company. So in the middle of the night, thank you for standing up or, or staying up late. Over to you, Jimmy. Great, very happy to be with you. Thanks, Peter and JP. Um, as uh, Peter mentioned, I'm the Vice President of Sales at Silvus Technologies. Um, for those unfamiliar with Silvus, we're a 16-year-old company um, headquartered in Los Angeles, California. We are uh, known to be a pioneer in the area of developing wireless mesh networks based on MIMO or multiple input, multiple output technology. Uh, we have deep roots in DARPA funded research. DARPA is a US military funding agency that, um, that pours money into innovative ideas in hopes that it could help benefit the warfighter. Uh, to date, we've received over $60 million worth of government funded research contracts, all of which are focused on delivering the benefits of MIMO, this uh, digital signal processing, uh, amidst the har harshest environments that you'd find on the battlefield, uh, with a key goal of delivering throughput, range, and robustness in situations which were previously impossible. Um, we have had quite a bit of success uh, within the military markets and law enforcement markets worldwide. Uh, we're just now starting to see some pretty promising commercial applications as well for this technology. Um, our global sales are managed through regional distributors and resellers, folks like Broadcast Solutions who are able to bring their own unique expertise uh, to uh, bring our technology and to solve the problems of their customers uh, and in their regions. Uh, so far, we've shipped 14,000 radios worldwide and that number is growing exponentially each year. Quick overview of our product line. Uh, as I mentioned, our radios are MIMO or multiple input, multiple output. That's a reference to the number of antennas you see on the radio. We have two by two MIMO radios, which have two antennas. We have four by four MIMO radios, which have four antennas. And uh, the number of antennas is correlated to the amount of benefit you can expect. Relevant to the broadcast market, uh, these radios provide bi-directional IP connectivity, uh, support for video, audio, and data. Now, as JP mentioned earlier, uh, to transmit video, you're going to need an external video encoder, an IP video encoder. And in particular, for the broadcast market, you need one that stands up to the, uh, the stringent quality requirements of, of the market. Uh, these radios are mesh relay capable, meaning every radio acts as a transmitter, a receiver, and or a relay. You can build a network uh, with many radios in it, and they can all collaborate to get data where it needs to get. 
uh, over the air, you're going to see less than 10 milliseconds latency from the radio itself. And then you add in whatever encoding latency to arrive at your end to end glass to glass uh, figure. Um, and we do have the widest number of band configurations in the market, over 30 different single band and dual band combinations available in our product line. Um, in recent years, we have had uh, a strategic focus on uh, conquering the, the challenges that exist with contested and congested environments, environments uh, spectrum that have uh, a lot of users or, or lots of sources of interference. And we have some tricks in our toolbox to help mitigate that. So just to reiterate a few of the points uh, that J JP made in the opening uh, introduction, um, the status quo, we all know the Coftum systems and, and um, they've proven their worth over the years. Uh, they do have some, some very significant pros and that they can deliver highly reliable video connectivity in a private link on your own frequencies without requiring external infrastructure. Uh, the downsides of Coftum, historically, they've tended to be quite expensive uh, they only deliver video in one direction. There's no support for IP data. And for every camera, you need an independent frequency. So if you have a 10 camera shoot, you're gonna need 10 separate frequencies, uh, which can be uh, prohibitive in some cases. Uh, in recent years, we've seen the market shift towards using cellular bonding uh, to deliver uh, live video uh, for live events. Uh, the pros here include uh, the fact that it's an IP based system and it's bi-directional. So you can start to support other types of data, return video, IFB, uh, et cetera. Uh, the cons uh, include unreliable coverage. You're only as good as your cell phone network and unpredictable bandwidth and latency, uh, depending on the situation. Uh, Silvis would like to uh, present our product as sort of the, uh, the best of both worlds. You've got the reliability, uh, the lack of a reliance on, an, on a public infrastructure that you get from a Coftum system uh, but you also get the bi-directionality and the IP-based infrastructure that you get from cellular bonding. And you are able to incorporate multiple cameras onto a single frequency. Uh, the one con that I would point out, however, is that our solution lacks an integrated video encoder. Uh, this is a little bit outside of our core expertise and scope. Um, so hopefully somebody will come along one of these days and solve that problem for us. Back to you. Thank you, Jimmy. A warm, uh, warm thank you for sharing and for staying up that late. And let's hope everything goes well with the election. Okay, thanks. Uh, now go to sleep, please. <laughs> All right. So a few years ago, we started... Okay, while we are waiting for Peter, uh, I think he has some, uh, he's having some technical issues right now. Uh, Yes, I think Bhutan, yeah, you can, uh, you can start with your part and then uh, we can, uh, we'll just wait for Peter to arrive and then we just uh, go on with our agenda. Yeah, over to you, Bhutan. Thank you, Jason, and welcome everyone from Budapest, Hungary. Let me share my screen. So on my screen, you can see the map of our beautiful capital city, Budapest. After we did some pre-calculation and pre-engineering, we placed the radio nodes all over the city at designated points. We placed the radio nodes to form a citywide mesh network. Our goal was to provide a wireless network connection to a flying helicopter all over the city. Since it was our first ad hoc installation, it took few days to do the planning. However, once the planning is done, we only need few hours to set up a mesh network like this. We established our headquarters at Budapest Airport. Our helicopter was a Eurocopter AS355. And here we use the SC4400 service radio. And we placed it on the rooftop of Alpha Hangar. Let's see the installation's photos. Here is how we mounted the radios on the helicopter. And here is how the our mesh network looked like before and after takeoff. Here was the headquarter and all those radio nodes. And after the helicopter left, this is how it looked like. Okay, now let's have a closer look at those radio nodes. We placed our first radio node on a hilltop 
without any existing infrastructure. For our second radio, we used a ladder from our office. Now that was really an ad hoc, wasn't it? But performed really well. Finally, the third radio was placed right in the city center on Galliard Hill. This was the key point for the whole network. Now let's see the flight of the helicopter over the city. In this screenshot, you can see the very last moment of the helicopter before losing line of sight. You can see the green and those red lines. Reaching those hills behind them, there was no line of sight between the helicopter and the headquarter. So we needed to install a relay station for the communication between the helicopter and the headquarter. You can see here that the link quality was extremely good, 24 megabits. After the helicopter had arrived back from those hills, we had connection again. In the next slide, you can see the helicopter above the M0 highway. It was more than 20 kilometers from the headquarter. Now through this citywide mesh network, we had a 25 megabits direct link from our headquarter to the helicopter. To sum up, this is how we established a citywide mesh network over Budapest. And thank you for your attention. Now back to Peter, if he is available. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Botond. I was starting to worry about dragging over in time and did the best. I cut out myself. Don't worry. We are here. So we really look forward to see your uh, nice presentation about the Lake Botton sail race a, bit, a little bit later. Okay. That at 10.30. So now over to Jason Sibald in Singapore. It's also getting a bit late over there, but uh, can you please tell us a few words about the coming sessions? Over to you, Jason. Yeah, hi, Peter. Hi, hi to our, uh, all of our attendees. Yes, I have... Uh, I have two very interesting topics to share later. Uh, so uh, those are the topics are one, two of the many applications that we can use our IP mesh network variables in the broadcast domain. So first, I will share about the service uh, I did in uh, in a car racing event in Shanghai, China, where we solved issues about uh, dead zones and hard to reach area with their traditional, which is you know nearly impossible with their traditional camera wireless uh, system. Um, the second part of my presentation is just a, a recent POC I did together uh, in partnership with, our, with Canon here in Singapore. So we did, uh, did a proof of concept to one of our key customer where we uh, demonstrate cellular bonding and IP mesh network working in synergy hand in hand and providing them uh, a next level of work of, uh, of uh, robustness in a wireless camera application. Uh, so we call that uh, solution a hybrid approach between uh, cellular bonding and wireless mesh network. So yeah, those are my topics for later on. And uh, back to you, Peter. Well, th thank you very much. I think we can look forward to two quite interesting uh, presentations coming up. So the thing that I would like to share very, very quickly with you, well, what I was about to do that when I was cut off, was just to give you a short glimpse of what uh, happens in the non-broadcast area. So to do that, I need to share my screen. I believe that you see my screen now. Okay, so this is a VIP or dignitary protection vehicle or a command and control vehicle. We work a lot with the unmanned uh, uh, surface vessels like uh, robots. We work a lot with dismounted radios for different uh, applications. Here you see a uh, rescue team providing video for instance, to the surgery or to a medical hospital or whatever, directly from the scene. We work a lot with uh, UAVs and UAV manufacturers. And this one is, uh, is an ongoing project where we replace the communication infrastructure in earlier aircrafts in Asia. 
Indeed, we have been traveling the world and doing different uh, proof of concepts and tests. And this is a maritime application. And well, we are in the middle of Bangkok testing it, doing uh, marvelous things with these radios with ad hoc installations. Something that is coming very rapidly for us is uh, long range naval applications, providing also boarding teams with the capabilities to provide video from the scene. Now, the point I'm making here is that these are exactly the same radios that we propose to the broadcast market. They look and feel exactly the same. What we change is merely the, the antennas and the accessories. So anything from omnidirectional antennas to sector antennas to tracking parabolic antennas for extreme ranges, we can achieve up over 200 kilometer range with these tracking antennas, for instance. And again, the point I'm making is that it's always about the same radios, regardless the application and regardless the market. That's the, the, the key to this. And uh, now, can I refer to you, JP, what do you have to say after seeing this? And basically, you are fairly new to the company, but what is your reflection over what you have met in the last couple of months and what we do with the Silvus radios? Yeah, no, look, um, uh, as you said before, Peter, I've been in the, the wireless camera industry a, a long, long time. Um, the the Silver's IP mesh is, is really quite unique. Um, it, it's definitely a, a, a solution. Um, it, it's a robust and reliable quality bi-directional IP link. Um, and, and robust and reliable for me is, is, is the most important thing. It, it really is one of the game changers of the industry. I, I truly believe that. Okay, now it's time for maybe some questions. I do not know. Do anyone see that we have any questions? Well, the thing that uh, that I can uh, let's say I can answer uh, <laughs> at least ask is one of the most obvious questions, which we always hear, or the, a couple of different questions. The first question we always get is how far can we transmit? So why not doing it the scientific way and ask Helge Langer, how far can we use this radius? How far can we transmit? Yeah, hello. So as you've shown already, um, one thing that influences the reach is the choice of antennas you make. So these may be optimized for short range or long range. Uh, second thing is, of course, the environment you are. So there may be challenging non-line of sight scenarios, for example, inside a stadium, or you may go for long range uh, line of sight applications like we see in a boat race later on, where you do like 70 kilometers. So it depends on a lot of what you want to achieve. And you have a bit also, um, you can spend the penny only once, so you have a bit of a trade-off between the range you want to achieve and the bit rate. But um, so it, it depends really on the scenario. You can do a lot, and as um, Jason has mentioned already, you can even pair it with other systems for combined performance because it is just IP. It is a transparent IP medium, so you can bundle it and combine it with other solutions from directed microwave to LTE to whatever comes along the way. Exactly. My, my, uh, my answer to this question is, is that it can be very, very uh, short and it can be very far. The best uh, the user can do is to have the radios, a couple of different radios, have a few spare radios than, than what they may be planning with. And since the whole network and setting up is so easy, what they can do is use uh, different antennas, have it using antennas as, a, as tools in a toolbox for the event of the day. They, they will quickly learn how to explore the boundaries of this. Yeah, so maybe we should also mention that the radios always create their own optimal topology in the network and do they routing automatically. That means if you want to replace a radio or you want to bring in an additional repeater, the network will adjust automatically and you don't have to do anything in the configuration. Yes. 
And then I'll throw in one more question. If we would have this holy grail with the, the latest encoder together with these radios, what would be the, let's say, the reachable uh, the latency we would achieve? What would you say is reasonable? Uh, we have currently tested a very high quality system where we have been at around 35 milliseconds over the air glass to glass. Yes, and that's, that sounds great because that brings us into live broadcast environments, which has kind of been, let's say, the unreachable area for IP-based radios in the past. Do you agree with that, Helga? Yes, for sure. Typically in live applications, you want to stay between uh, below two frames of delay. So we've achieved this actually with an H265 encoder already. So we are very confident that we can come up with an attractive package. Okay, so thank you all of my colleagues and thank you to everyone who has been attending this. And stay tuned, we have two more to go and uh, you can always contact us for any questions you may have. So all the thing that remains to be said from here is thank you and goodbye and see you very soon. Bye-bye.